Here we are back again, video five, live from the Gordon Terrace, newly renovated and carpet cleaned music group. So, uh, in video five, we are going to be taking those letter names that we did in video four and putting them on a thing called a staff, using circles to show sounds getting higher and sounds getting lower. Now, do you remember the three letter names from the last one? Here they are. Do you remember what word they spelled? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's B, the first letter, A, the second letter, G, the third letter. So now that you remembered those and they were in your head, let's put them up on the board to start this lesson. Oh yes, left, again, that's the hand that you are putting to work. And you did B, A, G. There's our three letters. And what we're going to do is play those three letters together. But this is what I'd like you to listen for, is as you play a B along with me, we'll do it together, and an A and a G. I want you to listen to the sound that your recorder makes because I'm going to be asking you, what was the highest sound and which one was the lowest sound? Okay, and we'll test your listening skills on that. So here we go, get ready on a B. So left thumb, one finger, let's do a B and listen to the tone. Now to an A, add that finger. Let's do a G. Now, which note do you think was the highest? Which one do you think was the lowest? Now, if you guessed that B was the highest, you were correct. And if you guessed that G is the lowest, you are also right. Good set of ears. Now, when we start showing a thing called a staff on the board, the staff is nothing more than a picture of those sounds. And circles on the staff are going to be showing you where the sound is going. So, of course, the high sound will show a circle in a higher place on the staff than the G, which is a lower sound. It'll be lower down on the staff. So, any of this from here on is just showing you where your sound is going. So, now that we played high to low sounds on the recorder, let's show on the board what they actually look like when we try to use lines on a board to show those sounds. So the first thing that you'll notice if you open your big brother's music book that's on the piano or look in the Reader's Digest song book, you'll notice lines going across the page like this. Those lines are called a staff. And there's always five lines like that. At the start of the staff, we notice something like this. You've probably seen those before. And even our music group door has something like that. Posters that are advertising a musical event usually have that. Yeah, so we associate that with music. Its job on a staff is it's called a treble clef. Uh, try saying that, treble clef. And treble means high sounding. So because your recorder is a high sounding instrument, it's going to play high sounds. So we'll use a treble clef to say that the notes from this instrument fit right in here. Now you'll notice that the staff 
has lines on it. And if I put a note like this using a circle, we would call that a lined note because the line goes right through the note. So if we move that note, there's a line note there. I guess there's five different places. Oops, I didn't want to move my line. Let's put that line back over there. There you go, stay. Let's move the note. There is the middle line of the staff. And then there's a couple higher lines over here, like this, okay? So there's five different places we could put lined notes. Now, because we've only done three on the recorder, we won't use all of that, but we'll use a small part of it. Some notes of the staff fit in the space. You'll notice here that the note is in between the lines. So there's a space there. And I guess there's four spaces on the staff like that. Will we use all of them today? No, because again, we're only playing three notes so far on our recorder. So you'll be learning three places on the staff. Let's start with this treble clef though. The treble clef has a nickname. Do you have a nickname out on the playground? Like maybe a shortened version of your name or a different version of it? Well, the treble clef has it too. Its nickname is called a G clef. So like the letter G, G clef. And what, if I had all of you sitting on this carpet in front, a lot of people might say that this kind of looks like a handwritten G. So if I did a handwritten uppercase G here, well, yeah, it's got the loop at the top, but that's not what, why we call it a G clef. The reason we call it a G clef is because of this spiral part at the bottom. I'll just put it in red here so that you can see it. That is circling this line right here. So the G clef is saying that line right where I put the note is called G. So this note would be a G. If I put another note here, oops, let's switch to a marker. That red note would be a G because it's on the same line. Well, let's try a purple one. Let's put a purple one over here. There's a purple note. And those are all G's because they're on the same line of the staff. Now think to yourself, how many fingers played a G? Got that? Okay. So if I was to put my three fingers down because that was the third letter of bag, these notes would be played like this. Notice I did not have to move my fingers because all three notes were on the same line. And just like reading from a storybook, we start at this side of the page and read across. So if these were words, you would say the cat went and the words would be written in that order. Same thing with notes. We play this note first, move over, play this one, move over, play that one. Let's do it together. Now, if this is G, and that was our lowest note, that means if we're talking about A's or B's, those go up a little higher. So it would make sense that from the G, we're going to go up into this area of the staff. We won't go this way because that's going lower. We want to make it go higher. So let's take this red note and find where B is. B is a lined note as well. So let's take the red one and put it right there. That, folks, is where the note B will go. And you'll notice that I moved it higher than the G. So it's up on the next line. And we, if G is on the second line of the staff, or the line circled by the G clef, B, I notice two lines above it, two below. Ah, it's in the middle. So B is on the middle line of the staff. Think to yourself, how many fingers did I use in the last video to play a B? If you're thinking this, I think we're on the same page. 
So now we're going to play these three notes. So you're going to start on the G, oh, three fingers. Then you're going to go to a B, up to one, because that's the first letter of bag. And then back to G, because this note is on the same line as that one, just a little later. Okay, let's get your recorder ready on a G. Here we go. Got that? Let's do it once more. There, you just read those three notes. Now, let's take this purple one and make it an A. Oops, wait a minute. G is on this line, B is only one line up. There's no line for a A. Uh-oh, do we have, did we do something wrong here? Oh, that space part, yeah, okay. Let's take the A and move it into the space. A will be your note that is in the space between the lines because A is not quite as high as the B and not quite as low as the G that note was somewhere in the middle. So, we'll put the A right there. So, let's play a G first, because it's circled by the G clef. Then we're going to play the B, which is on the middle line of the staff. And then we'll finish with the A, which is in the space. So get your recorder ready, and three fingers for the G. Let's play this together. Let's try it backwards. Let's start at the end and read to the beginning. Now, if we were going to put these notes in order and spell the word bag, well, I guess the B would have to go first. Now, what would go next? Would it be the purple one or the black one? Purple. Okay, let's do that. So the A was the note that was in between. And the G we'll take and move over here. Now we're using the staff to spell the word bag. Let's play that. The B is first this time. Let's get it ready. Here we go. Try that, get your B ready again. So that's just changing the order of the notes. Now, if you wish, we could pause the video here you, with this picture showing, using your left hand as you play Bs A's or G's, move your eyes back and forth on the staff, or if you got, want to get really creative here, get a pencil and paper. Draw a five-line staff, might need a ruler for that, or use the lines on a piece of writing paper and trace over five of them. See if you could draw a treble clef at the start. I usually start on the G line and I go clockwise up down, J. Point your finger and do it with me. Here we go. Clockwise, up, down, J. And what you could do is using G's, A's, and B's, don't worry about stuff down here or stuff up there. That'll be another day, hopefully when we're back in school again. And what you could try is writing a song, putting the circles on the G line, A space, or B middle line, and see if you can make a song 
draw a bunch of circles and see if you could play them on your recorder. You're at home now. You don't have to do the same song as the rest of the class because the rest of the class isn't here. So try writing your own song using circles on a staff and then playing it on your recorder. That will help you get familiar with where the B is, the A is, and the G. So just before we close this video, let's say it together. G is on the line circled by the G clef or treble clef. A was in the space between these two lines, and B is on the middle line of the staff because I see two above, two below. That's where we find our notes. And if you learn that, we'll just be using these three notes over and over in the next few lessons. So. Get out your pencil, try some writing, or leave this video paused right here, and enjoy reading a staff for the first time.